This is truly for the purpose of prayer. You know, you and I were talking some just about where the senator is spiritually. Yep. And with Daryl here, I'd love for you to share some of that with him. I'm confident, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that John McCain shares eternity with me. Mm -hmm. um, I, one of my biggest things, and I think I've talked to you about this, um, John's had the, the unfortunate mishap of being unloved by some in the evangelical world. Mm -hmm. And That's I, probably an understatement. Yeah. A few years ago, I probably would have had the same misconceptions about John McCain that everybody else in the evangelical community has. And I just would love to create a place where he gets loved on by evangelicals a little bit. Somehow. You make sure that they know who John McCain is and that they feel comfortable with the candidate and they get excited about the candidacy, and then you drill down. We see the life issue, we see the marriage issue, but we see all kinds of other issues that fit our faith that we that call us to be involved. At Liberty University, we have what 12,000 students on campus, and and uh, you're right. There's you know it's, there are there are concerns about right to life and religious freedom and those kind of things, but there's a whole new set of concerns on some of these new issues like the environment, you know, um, you know, like AIDS in Africa, some of these kind of things that that. Our young people will be co-opted by the left, yep. and if we're not there to talk about the conservative, Judeo-Christian answers and solutions to those problems, uh, the left will be there. Sometimes I fear that we become so angry that people, the the younger evangelicals, have said, "I don't want that anger. I'm going to do something else." A lot about campaigns, I think, is as much listening to people's concerns as it is anything else. If you don't listen, they think the candidate's not listening. Hey, Pat, this is Marlis Patma. Um, That's the biggest thing, is trying to get the evangelicals to understand that John shares their faith. They don't know he's pro-life, even though he has a 20-some-year voting record on pro-life. And they don't know where John is on the issues. And that, that's, our biggest, that's our biggest battle. I started my work working with churches in the shadow of steel plants that had closed on the south side of Chicago, that Nobody in a presidential campaign on the Democratic side in recent memory has done more to reach out to the church. We've had a faith uh, outreach program since the beginning of this campaign. Obama's large faith team has been at work for over a year, reaching out to evangelical students and pastors and congregants since Obama first announced his candidacy. Good morning, friends. This is Paul Montero, Deputy Director of Religious Affairs for the Obama campaign. Thanks for joining us again for another morning prayer call. Let us pray. Lord, we come into your presence this morning. Thank you for another day of life, another day of health, another day of strength. We ask that you would touch Senator Obama this morning in a special way. Walk with him, lead him, and guide him. We also lift up Senator John McCain this morning and pray for him and continued strength. And remember why it is we work on the campaigns we work on. And it's not about us. It's not about a party. It's about you. And it's in your holy name right now we say thank you. Amen. Well, thank you, friends, for dialing in again. Uh, please continue to help us grow this prayer circle by sharing the number. We want individuals who would otherwise, you know, pray on their own to, you know, just join with us to feel a, a bit more connected to the campaign nationally. Today I am in North Carolina and we're, we're talking to, uh, to people of faith and especially evangelicals and moderate and conservative mainline Protestants about Barack Obama and his Christian faith and his values and, and you know what the range of values issues are that Americans are considering in this election. We're going out to Chapel Hill and I'm going to do a faith forum there. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Joshua Dubois and I'm the National Director of Religious Affairs for the Obama campaign. Just flew in from Chicago. and. And so excited to be here talking with you all. I've seen the real live evidence of what I would call the youth tsunami. Uh, I think this generation is re-engaging in public life in a way maybe the, the last couple of decades of, of college students have not. Well, I'm actually um, just traveling around talking to folks about Barack. I'm a Christian. Uh, I write books that Christians buy. I don't know if you can call them a Christian book. I don't know. Uh, my books don't vote Republicans, so I don't think you can call them Christian books, but they're, they're books, <laughs> and, uh, and Christians read them. You know, we're led to believe that we're divided and we're angry at each other and we're bitter, and I want to tell you we're not. And we're, we're sort of worked up to be that way. I don't hate John McCain. 
I don't hate that ticket. I, I understand why they're doing what they're doing. I just did the math, and my math came up Barack Obama this election. 20 years from now, when my kids ask, what did I do during this time? And they will understand how historic this election is. I want to be able to say, you know, I got up, I worked, I did something. I didn't just sit on the couch and let other people uh, control the democratic process. I, I made my voice known and um, was a part of uh, a history-changing election. We'd love to open it up. Questions for Don, questions for me, anything that may be on your mind. So let's just open it up. For questions. Young evangelicals often like Obama's message, but some still need to be persuaded. So you're publicly, publicly endorsing a candidate. Yeah. Um, and I was wondering, how is that any different than what the Republicans have done for the last 25 years, saying, here's a Christian candidate, vote for him. I, I guess I feel like the danger is you're doing the same thing as the right, just calling it a different name. It's a great question, and, and I would say it's a difference between voting your faith and voting your values. There's an enormous difference for, between a pastor getting up in a pulpit and saying, vote for this candidate because of these divisive issues, then having a conversation with Don or with other folks where people are asking questions and you're making your own decisions and you're thinking through your value system and what lines up and what doesn't. This is how democracy works. This is what's supposed to happen. Yeah, could you tell us your name? Yeah, um, name's Jess. Um, I just want to go back to the abortion issue just for a little bit. I know I agree with you that it's not the only thing that we should vote on, but I also think that maybe it's important to have somebody in the executive office who does agree that this is something that is morally wrong. Yes, Senator Obama is pro-choice. He believes um, in a woman's right to make this decision, but he thinks that it's a difficult decision. He, think it's, he thinks it's a moral decision and that Democrats who fail to acknowledge the moral weight of what you're talking about aren't giving it, you know, the, the, what, it what it deserves. And Barack's saying, you, you know, we may, we may have a fundamental disagreement about you know, the, the, the issue at the end of the day about whose decision it is, but let's actually do something. Let's surround a woman with, with care so that she can make a real choice as opposed to not much of a choice at all. The press is sort of infatuated with the evangelical vote, which is important, but there are a lot of different kinds of people of faith out there. We are casting a wide net and reaching out to people of faith who don't normally vote Democratic and are pretty conservative and persuading them to, you know, for the first time in their lives, pull the lever for a Democrat. Hi, this is Joshua. Who's on the line? Hey, it's Paul, Sean, Max, Dan, Ashley, Michael, Rachel, Melissa, Terry. The whole crew, that's great. We have a phenomenal group of uh, full-time volunteers and interns working on different kinds of outreach. And then some great young people who have sort of taken some time off school and many of them have been on with us uh, since pretty close to the Don't beginning. Go into action today, <laughs> day of progress. Not Barack Obama speaks a language, an authentic and sincere language, um, that has resonance with the, the rhetoric of the American Civil Rights Movement, which is a language of social justice rooted in a vision informed by religion. They are in homes across this country. They have these things called faith forums. They're fascinating. Anywhere from 30 to 50 to sometimes 100 people gather in people's homes where they talk about Barack Obama. Here's how his values and his Christian walk coincide, match up, and try to explain some of this to this audience. The idea that the budget is a moral document. Right. What do we do with our money? Yeah. Where do we spend it? You know, what do we value? We say we value certain things, but where does the money go? Where do the resources go? And we're not talking about agreeing on everything because we had a one hour conversation. We're not talking about you know, stem cell research or abortion or gay marriage in a way that yeah, we're gonna agree on everything, because we're not. But people of goodwill can disagree, but we don't have to be disagreeable. We don't have to demonize those that don't feel the same way that we do. This is a long-term project. The, the great thing about Senator Obama is that he's been reaching out to people of faith for a long time. He's slowly helping to change uh, the religion and politics landscape in our country by um, you know, making people focus uh, or helping people to focus on a broader range of issues as values issues and letting folks know that progressives can be people of faith too and Democrats can be open about their faith.